All right. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome. First and foremost, let me thank you all for being part of today's uh, Media Central Stream webinar. Um, we're going to walk through today exactly what Media Central Stream is and the ecosystem of partners that we are, are launching with, uh, as well as talk about some of the workflows that we're enabling. So thank you again for all being part of today's call. At the end of this webinar, you should be able to walk away with, first and foremost, what is Media Central? Um, you should also have a good understanding of the AVID and High Vision partnership, as well as the AVID and Live View partnership, as well as the workflows that are now possible as a net result of combined offerings that are being brought together today. And then last but not least, we'll cover uh, the benefits of the combined uh, solution. And uh, we will have time for Q&A at the end. Just some quick logistics. We encourage you all to ask questions. This uh, so webinar is being broadcast not only over Zoom, but on multiple social media channels. So welcome to all of those folks who are participating on those channels as well. Um, we encourage you to click the Q&A button in the menu bar and ask questions throughout the course of the session. Uh, we do have people who are experts from Avid, High Vision, and uh, Live View, as well as Microsoft, all on the phone. And we will answer all the questions we can in the Q&A chat. Uh, and then we'll also identify some questions we'll ask live as well uh, at the end. And of course, you can certainly ask questions uh, and or save your question to the end um, where we'll leave some time to discuss any questions. But uh, like I said, please participate and, uh, and we encourage you to ask any questions you have as we go through the webinar. So the agenda today is we'll go through introductions. I'll introduce uh, today's panel, which is fantastic. Um, we'll talk about the Media Central Stream announcement and what it's providing. Um, we'll talk about the AVID and High Vision partnership and the announcement there that was recently made, as well as the AVID and Live View partnership and what that means, as well as the workflows that are now possible in the cloud as a net result of what we're doing here. We'll also touch on what you can do on-prem as well. And then we'll touch on benefits and then we'll hit on questions. Here is today's panel, and I want to first and foremost as well thank everyone who's on the panel today uh, for being uh, part of today's webinar. So we have Craig Wilson, who is the product evangelist for Media and Cloud here at Avid. He will be doing a couple demos for us today. Uh, we have Marcus uh, Schiller, who is the vice president of product marketing over at High Vision. My name is Ray Thompson, and I'm the senior director here at Avid for partner marketing. And then we have Daniel Pizarski, who is the vice president of engineering over at LiveView. Uh, but la and last but certainly not least is Tim Murphy, the Principal Program Manager of Media Entertainment over at Microsoft. So thank you all for being part of the panel today. We'll hear from everybody as we go along. So first and foremost, we uh, have announced um, the availability of Media Central Stream. Why did Avid uh, in, you know, introduce and or move in this direction to enable incoming IP streams uh, to be ingested into Avid production environments? Essentially, before the pandemic started, we saw a significant uh, adoption across the board in the industry of IP technologies. This was because streaming was not only becoming more secure, but it was also cost efficient and it was enabling uh, media companies of all types to be able to cover more with less. So for example, you now more or less had uh, what really amounted to a broadcast truck that could fit on your backpack or you could even fit a small encoder taking advantage of the broad access to internet, really that's available everywhere. So this has enabled uh, not only broader production, but it also has enabled much cheaper production, meaning it's less expensive to now produce a high quality broadcast across the board using traditional commodity internet and do it securely. So those were some of the key drivers that were enabling a lot of new different production technologies uh, like IP and driving uh, the adoption really across the board. This uh, has really started to significantly change the way in which businesses are run both from an operations perspective and it has significant economic benefits to media companies as well. So Avid uh, endeavored to create a way in which we could ingest those incoming IP streams and do so seamlessly within Avid production environments. And so essentially Media Central Stream is accepting incoming IP uh, from pretty much uh, multiple different sources. And we're then taking that stream, putting it into an Avid friendly format, and then checking it into the Avid production environment. 
Media Central Stream is a software only agnostic tool set that can run on a VM. It's available to run both on-prem and in the cloud. And it enables what I just described, which is the ability to take in those incoming IP streams and quickly turn them around and really enabling the workflow downstream to never really change. So if you're used to say an SDI workflow with an Avid production environment, and you're an editor and you're sitting there editing content as it's being written into Nexus, for example, that workflow for you will not change from the standpoint of the fact that you're now just taking in an IP stream as opposed to an SDI stream. So what we wanted to do was not only enable this ability, right, which gives us much broader coverage from really cameras, encoders, even mobile devices, but we also wanted to make it so that you could then go ahead and do the workflows you're already currently used to doing and do it in the way in which you're used to doing it. And so that's really what we're enabling with the essentials. So the essential stream receives the SRT and RTMP protocols. Uh, it's an open architecture. It is a software only tool set and it is agnostic. It records the incoming media in an Avid friendly format. It checks it into the Avid production environment and it makes it available for everyone downstream using either Media Central or Media Composer to be able to access that file as it's being written for fast turnaround workflows to be able to then ultimately do what they need to either for a linear or all digital broadcast. We support uh, SRT as well as RTMP out of the gate and uh, we will continue to add more protocols as we go along. Um, and what's uh, pretty cool about it, like I said, is that it is a software only tool set available to be deployed either on-prem or in the cloud. What we were going for in terms of some of the key benefits was first and foremost, simplification. So uh, if you were using IP uh, existing uh, methodologies today and you were trying to work with Avid production environments, you had to do some uh, technical hoops, if you will, in order to ingest that content directly into an Avid production environment. Now with Media Central Stream, a lot of those technology hurdles have been taken down and it is much more seamless. So like I said, uh, Media Central Stream is ingesting those incoming uh, IP streams. It's really doing everything behind the scenes it needs to in order to basically check it into the ever production environment in a very seamless way. It's very easy to deploy and maintain. It works with existing production environments. So there's nothing new you need to add further downstream in order to enable this to work with your existing infrastructure. And again, either on-prem or in the cloud. Um, it has a very small hardware footprint. It reduces your upfront investment uh, with subscription-based offerings, and it's a very simple architecture. And last but not least, it certainly enables cloud workflows. This has been a key component, quite honestly, that we have been missing. Uh, everything we've done up to now has been a uh, file-based workflow in the cloud. This enables a live workflow to happen now in the cloud, and we'll get into that a little bit further into the presentation. So to quickly summarize um, what Media Central Stream is really providing is a you know, very simple way to ingest incoming IP streams. And we're because we're uh, compatible with both SRT and RTMP, we're really opening it up uh, to a wide variety of devices who support both SRT and RTMP out in the field, which means that you now have access to a, a very broad array of cameras and coders and mobile devices that can now do contribution from anywhere into an Avid production environment, whether that's on-prem or in the cloud. Here's a quick overview of what that means. Streams, camera cards, satellite, studio, bonded cellular, edge devices, the ever-increasing array of incoming source options challenge new stations of every size. A critical challenge has been a fast and seamless way to get streaming formats quickly into the hands of users, particularly if a customer wants to work in the cloud. Software based and deployed on premises or in the cloud, Media Central Stream handles the most common streaming formats of SRT and RTMP to get media securely to your team to turn around stories faster than ever to any platform. There's also integration with the widely used bonded cellular platform LiveView. Lowering your overall cost and running on premises or in the Azure cloud, Media Central Stream lets you scale. It's a simple, reliable and secure way to capitalize on the latest media ingest workflows. So that's a quick taste of what Streams. is possible uh, with Media Central Stream. Now, launching Media Central Stream uh, is a critical component, but Having a strong ecosystem of partners 
really enables the workflow. And so the other announcement Avid made coming on the heels of Media Central Stream was our partnership with High Vision. What High Vision is bringing to the table is not just the SRT component, which if you're not familiar with SRT, SRT is an open source protocol that enables uh, the secure delivery of content over commodity internet from point A to point B or from point A to multiple points all simultaneously. Um, and it really is uh, been broadly adopted. There are, I think, over 350 companies now that are participating in the SRT Alliance. And really any one of those encoders, cameras, or mobile devices can now do contribution reliably into an Avid production environment. So we just opened up the ability for media companies to now accept incoming uh, you know, streams using SRT into Avid production environments from pretty much anywhere and now a huge array of devices. But the other key component to optimize that workflow is enabling that contribution to happen from high vision Makito devices, which add just another layer of ability in terms of the delivery of SRT streams into Avid production environments. So this was really a critical first step for us. And, uh, and because of the fact that SRT has been so broadly adopted, um, we're really excited to be partnering with high vision uh, out of the gate here. Um, the thing that we're enabling here uh, with the IP production is news, sports, and live event or remote live production environments. And again, those environments can be on-prem or in the cloud. And so we have Marcus uh, Fueller here from, from High Vision. Marcus, you, uh, you want to say hello to everybody and just uh, reintroduce yourself real quick? Yeah, thanks, Ray. Uh, hi, everybody. My name is Marcus Scholler. So uh, I'm the VP of Product Marketing at High Vision. And uh, just quickly, High Vision is a leading global provider of mission critical real time video streaming and networking solutions. And we've been working with Avid for a while, getting ready for this moment. We're really excited uh, that Media Central Stream is now available and, and uh, the Avid uh, workflows are now capable of taking these IP contribution streams to enable all kinds of uh, faster turnaround workflows uh, into editorial. So this is something that we are. I think really happy and proud and excited to be part of with you guys to take these workflows that are tested and verified. And, you know, as a company, we're really behind this to make sure that we're supporting you guys to do what's needed to uh, make this an ultimate su success for all of our customers. So this is a, you know, it's a really exciting moment. And uh, certainly IP contribution has been a very, very, very hot topic for the past year. And uh, we're delighted that it's here. So uh, you mentioned the products, the Megiddo X4, uh, uh, you know, that's one of our flagship products for, uh, for IP contribution. Um, it's a video encoder, low latency, high quality. Uh, SRT is a key component. The SRT protocol is a key component that enables these workflows. Uh, and I think it's a, you know, it's a fundamental bit of technology that has enabled this to really blossom uh, at a much broader, um, you know, worldwide level because it allows you to stream high quality video over the open public internet, as opposed to more propriety, uh, proprietary mechanisms, uh, which just makes it more applicable in all sorts of scenarios from news to sports to live events. Uh, when things are happening fast, uh, the internet is always generally available and it enables these workflows. So the Makito X4, the you know, key there, you can't really tell how big it is, but I think it's probably worth mentioning that it's you know roughly the size of a paperback and uh, uh, if people know what a paperback is anymore, uh, the uh, I was going to say Kindle ebook, but I'm not actually sure how big those are. But so yeah, it's about the size of a paperback. It's about two and a half pounds, so it's very portable. It's very practical for people to um, uh, take with them to bring uh, to these locations. And if it's centralized, they're also conveniently uh, sized in such a way that they can be rack mounted and there are options for that. So the encoder is what would be used for the contribution. And if people need to take those live streams, um, and actually use them live in another part of the workflow. There are also Makito X4 decoders that are part of uh, what we're bringing to market together uh, with Avid. Uh, so you can, of course, take those IP streams and go straight into Media Central uh, with, with the encoders. But if you want to use the decoders, they're an option too for, for, uh, for having live monitoring or, or taking your workflows live in other ways. Um, we have other options that are um, that are part of the, uh, the, the package that uh, you guys can purchase from Avid. Um, uh, SRT Gateway is another really interesting option that people have been using to aggregate streams, to organize, to enable remote monitoring so that those streams that are coming into the Avid workflows can also be viewed by people, uh, producers, uh, directors, other creatives, technical people that need to see what's going on. 
um, either on uh, you know a mobile device or a decoder or or whatever. And SRT Gateway is a component uh, that uh, you guys can add to your workflows that enables that. So I, I mean that's a quick overview of the different components that Avid uh, now have available to their customers for uh, enabling IP contribution workflows and editorial. That's great. Thanks, Marcus. And uh, I would also say too, just to build on what you said there around the gateway is uh, things like net return and monitoring are now uh, easily made available by right, using the gateway uh, so that people can not only uh, look at that content, uh, you know, as it's coming in, but obviously they're ingesting it now into avid production environments. And then the other key too here is latency, right? Latency is always one of the key things uh, people worry about when it comes to IP and IP contribution. And that's one of the areas where Makito certainly shine is being able to give you options as it relates to setting the latency budget when you do contribution leveraging those devices. So uh, we'll get into more of that in a moment. Um, but uh, but uh, we're, like I said, we're really excited. And this announcement was made uh, just, I guess, a week ago. And uh, there'll be more to come as well uh, from this partnership. But uh, this is a great way uh, to go out to market initially. So here's an example of sort of the workflow, obviously high level. But essentially what you're doing is uh, the Makito is taking in uh, the feed from a camera. Um, it's then being encapsulated using the SRT protocol. It's being delivered over commodity internet um, to Media Central Stream, where it's then uh, ingested, put into an Avid-friendly format, and then ultimately uh, written to a Nexus made available then to Media Central and uh, Media Composer systems sitting further downstream. So we can convert any SDI signal into uh, an SRT stream as well. And then that is what's happening on the Makito side. And then it's being, like I said, turned into an SRT stream and sent over the internet. And then we're recording that. All right. So the other key relationship here that uh, we have also announced is our relationship with LiveView. So I want to welcome Daniel to the webinar. Daniel, you want to just quickly reintroduce yourself? Thanks, Ray. <laughs> Uh, Dan Pizarski here, uh, VP of Engineering for LiveView Americas. And for anybody that doesn't already know LiveView, we're the bonding company. Uh, we make video contribution and distribution software and devices that at their heart have IP bonding. So take many unreliable networks or a combination of unreliable and reliable networks, bond them together uh, with a high amount of resiliency on the stream and then be able to do video contribution from pretty much anywhere on earth. Uh, while in motion, while moving from a moving vehicle, uh, you know, from multiple points around uh, the event or the uh, sporting event, uh, and get all those streams as, for those of you familiar with LiveView, back to your uh, central location. And, and then of course, do your further workflow with them. And now with this announcement today, get them directly into your Avid workflow. And I think that's the really exciting part. Yeah, thanks, Daniel. I mean, it's uh, it's been uh, a long time coming, right? We've been talking for quite some time, and it's really exciting to see it turn into uh, you know something real here um, with us. And and one of the key things that we're doing, right, is so uh, the workflow is uh, I think it's on the back, next slide here. So you know you're you're taking in uh, LRT streams uh, from any LiveView enabled device. LiveView is then encapsulating as well using the LRT protocol delivering securely over bonded cellular. And then we're accepting those incoming streams, uh, which are coming off of the LU 2000 uh, or the LU, I think 4000, is it, Daniel? Is it the 4K? Uh, but both yep. of those and, and the new uh, connector that we call uh, vCloud Connect. Uh, so you can really in, ingress um, from your LRT streams into your Avid workflow coming from the hardware you might already have or from as, uh, as you have, as Avid has planned out, your hybrid cloud or directly from uh, the LiveView cloud. And then that handoff today is uh, SRT, where we're then ingesting and then taking into the Avid production environment. And again, further downstream, for the editors or those using Media Central, they can now just access that content as it's being written or either the linear digital broadcast or both. And uh, basically we're enabling a fast turnaround workflow to have its net results. So That's Daniel, right. thank you. This is great. Uh, we're very excited uh, to be partnering with LiveView here as well. Thank you. All right, so what does this mean for uh, anyone considering doing uh, cloud-based workflows? So I've mentioned before, clearly there's a ton of benefit here for on-prem, but this also is going to enable um, cloud-based live workflows, which again, up to now, um, 
has been a challenge. So with that, I want to welcome Tim Murphy. Tim, you want to just reintroduce yourself real quick? Yeah. Group? Hi, Ray. Thanks for having me here. And good morning. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm, I'm Tim Murphy. I'm a principal program manager. I, I have the privilege of sitting in Azure's uh, Media, and, Media and Entertainment Engineering Org. Um, and, you know, just so it's clear to everyone on this call, we're a partner-led um, strategy, which means, you know, we're really the hyperscale public cloud platform that our partners and customers leverage on a global scale. And in, and in fact, for those who don't know, uh, Avid was one of the very first uh, M&E Azure engineering investments and partners, um, particularly on a global scale. Years working together, Ray, and it's good to see you again. Yeah, thanks, Tim. And I, I, I'm... As always, we're just thrilled uh, to be partnered with Microsoft and, and uh, Microsoft Azure. And this, I think, takes us to the next level, right? Where, uh, again, we have been challenged with enabling sort of these news and or, you know, remote live or sports oriented workflows in the cloud, uh, especially when it comes to being able to take in live streams. And so this really eliminates that as a hurdle. So now anyone uh, can then do acquisition uh, using either high vision or live view, do contribution over commodity internet. We can ingest that content. And then again, in the cloud, folks can now access and edit that content and ultimately deliver that content um, out to uh, either the linear or digital broadcast. And so um, while there's still work to be done here, of course, um, we are uh, definitely excited that this is now one of the key ways in which folks can now do uh, contribution. Um, up to now, as I said, it's been primarily file-based um, and a lot of the work that's been done in the cloud has been more post-focused, um, but I think this opens us up to uh, a lot of new workflows that, uh, like I said, just weren't really possible before. So we're very excited about what this really enables. We are as well, Ray, and you know, the, the investments that the two companies made early on and, and Avid Nexus and Azure, for example, operating as a, you know, a cloud native file system you know, for open up collaboration to, use, to your earlier point um, was a file based workflow. But you know, we're super excited about you know, the combination of, of all these partners coming together to start to create the contribution of, of real time feeds. And all that work we've done, Ray, over the years of Media Central, Media Composer, and Nexus are just accruing value to the next evolution. That's really where this is heading with the newsroom in the cloud. That's so well said. I mean, I think that's really what people maybe don't fully realize is a lot of the work that went into the relationship at the beginning wasn't just a technology or, or you know, partnership, a marketing partnership, but this is a real deep relationship and, and the integration of the Nexus file system into the Azure blob storage stack is, uh, you know, one of the key components enabling a lot of this to happen in the first place. So I'm glad you brought that up, Tim. Thank you. Um, and so with that, um, you know, I wanted to just highlight the fact that we're now going to be able to realize some new workflows. And while we're still on the front end of some of these curves, uh, there's going to be a lot you're going to see, I think, in this area. And again, it's really about uh, this whole IP component, which is really going to enable uh, live news production, live sports, and remote live production that happen reliably in the cloud. And while we understand everybody's going to be uh, dealing with hybrid environments, um, we, we feel like this is just a huge step forward and, uh, and a very exciting time for all of us uh, you know, in the industry. So this is great. Um, so with that, I'm going to hand it over to uh, Craig Wilson. And Craig Wilson is going to walk you through a demo of Media Central Stream. So Craig... Take it away, my friend. Great. Hi, Ray. Hi. Thanks, uh, everybody. Uh, so let me share my screen, and then we'll get uh, on with the, with the demo itself. So hi, everybody. Um, my name is Craig Wilson. I'm the um, Avid Product Evangelist working in the Media and Cloud uh, BU. And what I'm going to take you through is a, a short demo um, of really the key functionality that we have inside of Media Central Stream. So you know, one of the things to, to mention is that you know, Media Central Stream is just running here on a, on a web page. You know? So this is running um, on a web page um, on, my, um, on my, my laptop running through Google Chrome. Um, and that's what I'm using to, to connect um, to it. So what you see with Media Central Stream is that there are four channels. 
So I have four channels on my Media Central Stream device here. Um, each of these channels I can use to record different things. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a, in a second. Um, and really what I'm gonna focus on just now is really the, the user end of things. You'll see at the top right-hand side, there are some different tabs that we have here, but I'm gonna focus on this one called the remote console because that's really what a user would, would use. Now I'm, I'm running on Chrome. I'm just gonna make this full screen. So I've got a bit more screen, screen real estate. Um, and what you can see here is, you know, I already have a feed coming in on, you know, one of the, the channels that, uh, that I have here. And if I hover my mouse over that, you see I get some information coming in um, about it. It tells you the number of audio channels, the frames per second that's coming in, um, what type of feed it is. You can see here it's, it's progressive um, and also the bandwidth that, uh, that's coming in as well. But the key thing really is what we have at the top right hand side here, where if I click on this burger menu, you see that we have access to a number of different um, templates. So I have ingest templates, I have routing templates, and I also have crash record settings. So what are these things that we can that we can use? So the first thing we'll take a quick look at is the routing templates editor. So this is where I can go in and I, I can actually create a template for you know, a, a stream that's going to come into me. Um, and then I can obviously repurpose that. So there are some you know, settings that we have here. For example, you know, we have the stream address. We of course can have some parameters for, for audio and video. We can also work in caller mode or listener mode, depending on what the, the type of stream is, is coming in. Now, obviously that stream address is going to have a host. So we obviously have a host address addressed here. You can have uh, for additional security, you can have passphrases associated with these streams which are, which are coming in. You can also define the port that you're actually going to be you know, ingesting from uh, as well. And then of course, you can also have the protocol. So you know, here we're supporting both SRT and, and RTMP feeds uh, to, to come in. And that's really because it's uh, about being, being open. It's about taking advantage of, of these kind of, of protocols um, because these protocols are now included in so many different diff uh, devices, um, you know, whether you're streaming out, for example, from your from your phone, for example, um, or from even your laptop, you know, other the kinds of devices that you can have, you can do streaming from from lots of these different places. So the routing templates editor is where you go in, and you can define, for example, you know, a whole bunch of of different um, routes that we're going to use. So I'm just going to enable this one here because I've actually got the High Vision Play Pro app. Um, running, so you can see here it uh, accesses some of the settings, and this is what I would use, you know, to set things up. And we'll come back to this in a second. The next thing we have is we have ingest templates. Now, with ingest templates, this is where, for example, I can go in and I can define the codec that I'm going to be recording in. So while I could be taking in, you know, an, an SRT or an RTMP uh, stream into different channels, um, I could also be recording, you know, in slightly different different codecs. So here, the first codec we're supporting is XDCAM. That's the one that we see used um, most often in certainly news um, and production environments. Um, so you can see here, I can have some presets. So I can define which codec it is. I can also define you know, the resolution of what we're bringing in, but I can also define the destination on my Nexus. So this is a, a Nexus workspace that we're bringing in. I have some defaults around the file name. So for example, here, you know, the default would be you know, date, time, channel, for example, but of course you can, you can change this. And because we're working in a Media Central production environment, I can also enable this as a check-in. I can generate a thumbnail automatically, and I can also make this available as a growing file. And of course, that's something that's really important, particularly in news environments, of making sure that the streams are available very, very quickly uh, into the hands of, of the people that you want to uh, that you want to have. And then the final thing that we have here is we have some crash record settings. Now we'll look at these in a little second, but again, you can define for your crash recording, which of those ingest templates you want that crash recording to use. So you don't have to do anything else other than hit one button and it will go off and it will go into record. Now, the first thing I'm gonna do just now is um, I'm going to do um, a recording on this channel here that you can see I've got a feed coming in. So I can do one of two things. I can either click on the button here to do a crash record, and that will simply go into record automatically based on 
the crash record settings that are set up for this particular channel. Or I can actually select here to do a new recording. And this gives me a little bit more flexibility. So I can go in and I can choose one of my templates. But of course, I could change you know, any of the information that we have here. So for example, here, I'm going to go in and I'm going to change the, the name and I'll call it Craig and Mia webinar. And then when I'm happy, just click on record. Now, what this is going to do is in a few seconds, you'll see it, it will put this channel um, into record and it will begin to show me some information. So you can now see that this channel has gone into record. Um, I have some on-screen display settings. If I bring up here, you can also see I can change these. So say, for example, you know, I want to take off the house time code, for example. You know, I could take that off and I can change it. And you have these controls for each of you know, the, different, uh, the different channels that, uh, that you're working with. So that record is now, is now happening. But the other thing I want to do now is I want to set up a new routing. So here I can select to create a routing. As I mentioned before, I'm going to select the High Vision Play Pro uh, and just rate that and route that. And there, what you can actually see is a shot from my camera, which is actually just pointing at the window at the very window at, um, at the very snowy scene that uh, that we have um, outside. So that's how I can use those routing templates and those you know ingest templates. But I think one of the key things here is about the downstream workflow because I think it's really important that the downstream workflow um, really doesn't change for any of the users. So I'm just gonna come out of full screen mode here so I can go into my Media Central Cloud UX client that, uh, that I have here um, as well. Now, if you're not familiar with Media Central Cloud UX, this is our browser-based tool um, uh, to access content in a Media Central production environment. Um, and what I'm looking at here is my folder structure. So this is my folder structure inside my Media Central production environment. And if I just refresh the, the view that, uh, that I have here, then I can now see the feed coming in. So here you can see the Craig and Mia webinar feed uh, that's coming in. And if I double click on this, it will load it into the video player to allow me to use it. Now I'm doing this inside Media Central Cloud UX. I could also easily be doing this using Media Composer because inside Media Composer, we of course have access to the Media Central uh, production management um, window, the Media Central Cloud UX panel that's, that's there. So for your users who are familiar with using this, this will be you know, very, very familiar to them. So you know, there the feed is, is coming in and I can now begin to work with it as if it was any other feed that I have in my production environment. So for example, here, you know, I can obviously mark you know, in points and I can mark out points. So we'll just go mark it out. And then I can just add that directly into my timeline here. Um, and this would allow me to then you know, go off and to continue to edit and work with the feeds that I've got coming in. Now, I'm just going to switch back for a second to Media Central Stream, because this time what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a crash record. So you can see the recording there is just finished. This time, just going to do a crash record. So just press the button here for um, a crash recording. And as you can see, it just immediately goes into record. So I didn't need to fill out any of the settings or, or anything like that. And if I go back into Media Central Cloud UX again, let me just make this full screen. Uh, this time you see when I refresh the screen that uh, you know there's my feed now coming in. If I make this a little bit bigger, I can go into camera card view. You can see there is the shot, you know, looking out into my snowy um, garden at the moment. So you know the access to the content is very very quick. You know, almost instantaneously as soon as the recording starts. I can go in and I can then access it. And now that I've got that content in my Media Central production environment, you know, what can I do with it? Well, you know, I can edit it, I can publish it to social media using Media Central Publisher, which is part uh, of what we have inside, you know, Media Central Cloud UX, or I could publish it to, you know, a Playout server, or I could share it with my, um, you know, my CMS um, system to, to go off and, and, and publish. But that key thing is that downstream workflow that you have uh, for users is the same uh, as they would have um, at the moment, but it really is taking away that complexity that's existed in the past for how we get streams, you know, coming from 
streaming providers um, quickly and efficiently uh, into you know, that media central production environment. Now, the workflow that I've shown you there for, for uh, you know, bringing in those, those SRT streams, it would be identical if I was taking something in from a live view source. I would simply be going in to those routing templates, selecting you know, the routing template that I've got set up or creating a new one. It's very simple to do. If you have those that, that information that I mentioned about the, the, the URL host, any passphrase and the, the port that you're using, and then you can bring that material directly into the system. So it really is all about you know, removing complexity. If I just go back to you know, the Media Central stream again, it's very, very simple to use. You, know, you have your routing templates, once you understand what the information that you have for there, set them up, and then it's a case of set, select the route that you want and put the channel into record, and almost immediately, you know, the video is available for what you want to, to do. Um, I think a couple of other things to, to, to point out is, you know, each Media Central stream has, has four channels. So each of these channels could be recording, you know, different streams that are coming in, um, obviously. Uh, when you're done, it's very simple and straightforward. You can simply go in and you can simply switch to another recording or, you know, I set this route up as none and it just puts the channel back into standby. If I want to go back to it, just as we did before, create the routing, select what you want, hit route, and then you see the previews already coming in um, as well. Um, so Ray, that's where we are in terms of what we have with Media Central Stream. Key workflows that's enabling around news, live production, sport, a very easy and simple way of bringing things in and the partnership we have with, you know, um, uh, with High Vision and with Live View. And then the final thing to mention is everything I've shown you is actually on a system that's running in the cloud. So it really is, you know, taking away a lot of that complexity uh, and really providing, I think, a gateway and enabler uh, for, for lots of uh, new workflows to come. So very exciting um, developments. Uh, and Ray, with that, I will hand it back to you. Thanks, Craig. That was great. I appreciate it. Um, so that is, that's very, that's very cool. Um, so let me just get back to the slideshow here. All right, so uh, just to sort of further uh, highlight what Craig was mentioning. So what you're looking at is a software-only agnostic tool set that runs on a VM, highly scalable, um, while at the same time lowering costs. It's very flexible, uh, fully integrated into the Avid production environment, enabled by the partnerships with LiveView and High Vision. Uh, we're enabling both on-prem and cloud-based live production workflows for news, sports, and remote live production. It's secure. Um, both LRT and SRT are secure and have security baked throughout uh, to enable secure transmission over commodity internet to anywhere, from anywhere to anywhere. Um, and this enables, again, that sort of downstream experience that everybody's been used to uh, when it comes to using Avid production environments. So your workflow, uh, for all intents and purposes, doesn't change. You're just adding this new capability that gives you much broader coverage from a wide array of devices uh, to take in more content, do so in a seamless fashion and deliver faster across linear and digital platforms. And so it's very, very exciting. Um, I'm just gonna stop sharing for a second because we're gonna do a little Q and A here. So uh, if everybody would put your cameras on, uh, that would be great. And um, I'm just gonna sort of ask a few questions uh, given what we just discussed. So, so uh, when you think about um, the, the first ones for, for Daniel and Marcus, so if you think about IP contribution, sort of what was happening pre-pandemic, right? And so sort of the adoption rates uh, for IP production, and then sort of what's maybe happened subsequent to the pandemic. Um, you know, Marcus, I'll start with you. What have you seen? Has, has, have you seen a, a significant uptick in the use of IP? Well, certainly uh, before the pandemic, we were getting uh, a lot of our customers who would deal with us were obviously enabling live contribution workflows um, for their new sports, live events, et cetera. Uh, what happened when the pandemic kicked in, obviously, was that suddenly everybody was at home and, uh, and they needed to figure out new operational ways of making sure that people could not only do the contribution workflows, but also 
uh, enable collaborative workflows in which um, the various members of the team could see what's going on, could collaborate and could, could basically be part of the process. And uh, we saw lots of examples of uh, customers. I mean, back in uh, March, uh, what, you know, the NFL was working on the NFL draft, which was virtual and it was very quickly put together because it really happened early on in the pandemic. And it was all about enabling uh, all of the various you know, distributed participants from the prospects to the GMs and everybody to the, you know, the various uh, NFL staff and all of these different people to work together. And SRT was a critical component that enabled that because actually also in the early days uh, of the pandemic, uh, internet usage was really, really high. Um, and there was tons of traffic and it was creating all sorts of other problems. Um, that SRT ultimately was able to overcome. So um, we saw an enormous amount of uptick at that point. And we were talking to a lot of our customers to kind of understand, is the pandemic accelerating your transformation? And clearly everybody was saying yes. Um, and more interestingly, we were even polling people throughout asking if they thought it would kind of go back to normal. Uh, when the pandemic started to uh, wind down and the general consensus of like a large majority of people, like 75% or something like that, that we were talking to were saying that they didn't think that it would because the operational benefits that they were getting from these IP workflows um, were, were, were making uh, all sorts of things, um, I, I, I mean, better, I suppose, is the right, this is the right word. Uh, I'm not sure if people were thinking in that in those terms exactly, but but really that was it. The benefits that they were getting from it is something that they see them continuing to do. And and so, uh, yeah, there was, a, there was a, a lot of adoption of those workflows and we think they're sticking around now, definitely. Thanks, Marcus. Daniel, how about you? How, in terms of live view and sort of, you know, usage, did you see a big uptick post pandemic? I mean, certainly you guys were broadly adopted already pre, pre pandemic, but uh, can you just talk a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, we saw just a, a huge uptick, uh, right, in the amount of IP streams out there and what they were being used for. As, as uh, Marcus said, you know, maybe you had a couple of units to go have your field crews be able to do the shot from where the news is happening. Uh, and you had an appropriate number of units for uh, doing, you know, deploying with those crews. And then all of a sudden during the pandemic, you not only had crews out there trying to, to cover the news, but you had everybody remote. You had the anchor in their basement and the weather person in the, you know, in their den and uh, had to get those streams back. So we just saw an explosion of the use of software and hardware uh, to get reliable streams back um, to, you know, some kind of head end. But, I, you know, I think, and Marcus touched on this, this uh, move to the cloud and move to IP-based workflows was there pre-pandemic. I mean, it was, a, it was a direction the industry was going already. Uh, so I think it wasn't like, it was certainly people had to invent a lot of new things during the, the uh, true, you know, first lockdown and the crazy times of, of this uh, worldwide crisis that we've been in. But a lot of those cloud workflows and IP-based workflows were already there. It just it was a huge acceleration in terms of how rapidly you had to adopt them. I think it went from, a, I'll spend the next year investigating to this, to, oh, I need this to work tomorrow, sort of yeah. a, a challenge for a lot of the uh, broadcast engineers out there. So we were, you know, really happy to help with that. And I think, you know, things like this uh, new workflow with Avid are just going to continue to help with that and enable the crews to get done what they have to get done. And do you see uh, the same things that Marcus was saying in terms of, you know, the new normal, right? Is it, is it uh, the new normal is now really using these types of methodologies uh, even more so than before, right, to, to produce content? Yeah, I think, you know, it's a, it, there, there are a lot of advantages here, even as the world thankfully returns to normal uh, at a, you know, probably a slower pace than all of us wish it would, but, uh, you know, at a slow pace. So the ability to have uh, talent from anywhere, the ability to have even your behind the camera crew from anywhere, uh, we, you know, we've heard a lot about kind of excitement over workflows of, oh, now I can have a, uh, you know, bring in whether it's voice talent or a technical director, or, or they happen to be located in, uh, you know, Amsterdam, I can still use them as part of this production and, and get that done. Um, so there's a lot of excitement around those workflows, I think very justified, and I don't think it'll go back fully to, um, you know, the previous world. I think the one thing we're all excited to go back to from the previous world is getting together and seeing each other and you know, <laughs> right. doing, doing things like, uh, you know, a, a full production in person, just because it's fun to be there with each other. But I think from a technical advantage and a cost advantage and a amount of content you can produce advantage, this is here to stay for sure. 
And so that's a great point. And I'll ask you guys another question uh, since you mentioned it, right? The cost advantages, right? I think there's the obvious ones, right? Of using commodity internet versus say satellite or fiber, right? But can you talk about some of the other sort of both operational and cost benefits that people maybe don't realize in the surface, right? That you do get from leveraging IP for, for doing production. Uh, Marcus, why don't you go first? Yeah, uh, I mean, this, I think it started for us before, obviously, the pandemic, when people started to identify the idea of, of using uh, IP contribution for remote production workflows. So, uh, it, you know, the idea of covering, say, a live sporting event uh, that's taking place uh, in Asia or in Europe, but you want to centralize your production resources back in uh, headquarters, wherever that might be, let's say, let's say Los Angeles, as the example of a, a customer of ours, Riot Games, who does the League of Legends World Championships. And for them, the idea was being able to take all these different multiple camera streams, transport them. Um, and originally, I think they were looking at managed networks, but the cost benefits that came from switching to, to internet potentially uh, makes it much more attractive. Uh, it allows you to scale because you can have more, you know, more of those types of events that you're covering. It reduces your need for the, you know, the travel and, and expenses that go with moving large teams around to all the events. So uh, we saw a great example um, last fall working with a customer of Fox Sports who were dealing with NASCAR, uh, were dealing with, um, with, with baseball, with college football, with, you know, all, all the sports that they're covering. And they had this idea that they were calling production anywhere that allowed them to keep their, their talent in place, making it easier for more of the talent to be part of more of the different events they wanted to cover. So they could have their best teams part of all of the, the projects instead of being in airports and, and running around trying to get from one place to the other. So the def there are definitely operational benefits in terms of T&E. You, you need a reduced staff on site and you keep more of a your people either in central locations or uh, less Craig, uh, as uh, Dan was mentioning, um, at home. Uh, certainly lots of analysts, uh, on-air commentary, uh, all sorts of people like that. Not only are they contributing their feeds, but they also need to see what's going on. Um, and that's, you know, the, the combination uh, has enabled some pretty interesting things there. Um, and, uh, uh, and I think because of the simpler uh, teams that are being deployed, it also is helping reduce setup time. So they're, so all in all, they're, they're not sending as many people out. They're not spending as much time getting ready for the event because there isn't as much stuff to get ready. Most of it is central and already in place and working. Uh, so, I mean, I think those are, you know, certainly big, big three benefits and, and the idea of, of these, these sort of, uh, uh, lightweight, easy to deploy uh, IP systems that get out there and allow people to do uh, to, to get their feeds back to the central locations, whether it's for you know live on-air workflows on-prem in the cloud and now editorial as well. Editorial as well just means that you can do more of it. Yeah, that's great, uh, Daniel. I imagine you would echo a lot of those same thoughts. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I think. Uh, Live has long been at the kind of forefront of uh, using inexpensive networks, right, as a way to reduce costs to, to do video contribution. But what we see in these kind of latest cloud workflows is a iteration above that even, where now things like uh, the amount of hardware you had to have at the head end is moving to the cloud. And of course, the big advantage of the cloud that the whole you know world of computing has known for years is the malleability of uh, what software you have in the cloud. So where before for a special project, you know, take something like the Olympics as an example, you might have to order, you know, quite a bit of new gear to rack up and, and put in a rack just for the huge amount of content you plan to do for that two week period and then be done with it, right? Tear it down, maybe reuse it for some other projects in the future, but it's just sitting in the rack, taking up space. And now in the cloud, you can dynamically spin up exactly what you need, use it for the duration you need it and then tear it down uh, when you don't need it anymore. So even, uh, you know, just a kind of very minor example in like your Avid workflow, instead of having to have all of these, uh, you know, play to SDI record hardware devices now spin up exactly what you need in the cloud, get it all done, and then change that around for the next production that has a slightly different need, you know, no more forklifting out all the old gear. It's uh, just uh, use what you need in the cloud, tear it down. And that's a big event. That's always been the promise of the cloud when it comes to computing. Now finally arriving to the world of uh, broadcast, and I think going to even just keep iterating on that idea of, you know, moving to IP and now moving to IP plus the cloud is a, is a big call saver for content producers out there. Well, that's a great uh, lead. And so, Tim, you know, when you kind of think about the journey we've all been on, right, between Avid and Microsoft, right, this is a big, this is a big win, right? This is a big move forward. 
Yeah, again, I can't express how super excited we are about this, this opportunity. I mean, for partners like yourselves and High Vision Live View to, you know, leverage, you know, one of the world's largest global backbones so that as everyone, you know, is already describing, literally anyone can contribute to a news program now from anywhere. And, you know, we have evidence of these spikes you know, early in the pandemic and, and continuing to grow you know, depending on workloads, we've seen GPU utilization shoot through the roof early on because of post-production workloads, for example. Um, you know, you look at the numbers of uh, users on Teams today, even, you know, in, in an enterprise environment are just, they're astronomical at this point. They continue to grow. So, yeah, we're excited. We think this trend is, is likely here to stay. Yeah, excellent. Uh, we do too. Um, so, uh, real quick, Marcus, can you just sort of Give us an update on the SRT Alliance and sort of, uh, you know, any new new members potentially and uh, and or just, uh, you know, talk about the breadth of, of the Alliance. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely. There's I mean, there's been a lot going on there. Uh, just just quickly on SRT, because I saw somebody had had a question about it, um, uh, about the, the, the benefits of it. And and really SRT, the protocol itself helps with. Uh, high quality video transfer over over any network, but of course for this conversation, most importantly, public internet, uh, overcoming problems related to packet loss and 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 doing it all um, with you know with the high vision equipment, which is all all very low latency. Plus the protocol, the idea is getting those streams into workflows quick, um, simplifying problems related to firewalls. Firewall traversal is a very important part of this, uh, and ensuring that you can do it all with uh, a good amount or a, a reasonable amount of bandwidth. Uh, because uh, you know, obviously, uh, when you're using the public internet, you don't necessarily have a huge pipe. So, you know, SRT helps with that. And so, back in um, 2017, High Vision started what is called the SRT Alliance, um, and it was a, a, it was an open source initiative um, in which we were inviting. Uh, organizations around the world to join with us, and you guys joined very, very early on, to help promote the, uh, the use of SRT as a way of overcoming these challenges related to IP contribution, distribution, et cetera. And, um, and so uh, 2017, that was a, at an NAB in person, uh, which was fun. Uh, and, uh, and it's grown steadily since then. So uh, we actually just uh, recently announced that we passed 450 members. So uh, a lot of uh, big companies uh, from around the world, uh, most recently companies like AJA, uh, Ross Video, and, and just a couple of weeks ago, Sony joined the SRT Alliance. So uh, Microsoft is, a, is, is, is already in, I mean, you know, there's lots of companies that have joined the SRT Alliance, 450 and growing fast um, to take this protocol and adopt it, use it, make it a de facto standard for high quality, um, you know, uh, internet live video transport. And um, I think what we're seeing, I mean, if, for, for instance, in the Sony example, it's a great example where they have IP enabled cameras and they wanna be able to stream those into workflows directly. And, and this, uh, this announcement has showed that they, they see the value in these kind of workflows and the need to overcome the problem uh, of unpredictable you know, internet performance to make sure that you can still leverage it to get high quality video into your workflows, whether they're live workflows or editorial workflows. So yeah, there's, uh, I mean, there's, there's always more to come and you can go to srtalliance.org to get more information. There's webinars every, every couple of weeks with different partners who are getting on board talking about their workflows. And uh, so, yeah, that's, it's a very, it's been a very exciting time. It's been moving very quickly. And I think, uh, you know, with the pandemic, it certainly emerged as a very, very important bit of technology to help people overcome their challenges. Very cool. So Craig, turning to now being able to take in all that content and Raul for that matter. Um, Craig, can you talk first sort of from your perspective, you know, what, what this means, right, in terms of from an avid production environment for news, uh, you know, specifically? I think the key thing about it really, Ray, is, is just how simple it is. You know, it's just very straightforward to set up and very straightforward to use. And it's also about enabling contribution from, from anywhere. You know, I think that was been, you know, probably the most surprising thing. The, the amount of devices that you can stream out of, you know, for example, as I showed there, you know, just streaming out from, from my own phone that's just, just sitting there. I can also stream out from my, from my laptop. So what Mark, one of the things that Mark has said earlier on as well is that, you know, if I've got a feed that's coming in, I could also access that and view that on my phone. So if I'm someone who's working on location, I could access the stream and view it remotely as well. And I think that's, 
you know, enabling lots and lots of different workflows that, that, that people, I think, hadn't really, you know, con considered before. But I think to go back to something I said in the course of the demo, the other thing that's, that's such a big advantage of it is for the production team, there is no real difference in what the workflow is. It's just another feed that's coming into the system that you can access as a growing file. You can take that content and then repurpose it to you know wherever you, you, you want it to go. So, so while customers have, of course, had workflows where they've been able to take in streams before, it's normally involved some kind of transcode process that's, that's really held up that delivery of the content. To the, to the end users. And what Media Central Stream does, of course, is it takes in that stream and it, it's doing the magic that then converts it into your house format that's then available for your users to use. So it's really taking out, I think, what's been seen as one of those blockers um, in the workflow of you know, fast and easy access to, to streams which are, which are, coming, which are coming in. Um, so I think it's going to be you know, hugely you know, useful um, for, uh, for users. And also from a deployment you know, standpoint, you know, the fact that it's just running on a web page, you know, so I, the only thing I need to have installed on my laptop is Chrome, for example, to, mm -hmm. to bring that yeah. up. I need to have a username and password. You, know, let's, you, know, you still have to have things, things like that. Um, but I think that also makes it you know, nice and straightforward for, for people to use, particularly working in remote environments, as we, we've all discussed about you know, um, people are dispersed these days. They're not working in, in, the, in the location. So it's about making that easy to, to access as well. So I think there's huge benefits for you know, a whole range of different workflows that, um, you know, both High Vision, Live View, Microsoft and ourselves um, support. So I think it's, it shows, you know, an enormous amount of, it's almost like a transformative, it's one of these transformative steps as we go along the way to you know, more hybrid and cloud-based environments. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. Raul, when, when you think about um, sort of Media Central Stream and sort of all the work that's uh, been put into it and now this ecosystem, um, you know, what are you, what are you starting to see from a product perspective, right? That, uh, you know, not just now what's, what's now enabled, but sort of what, what the potential is maybe even going forward. Yeah, so uh, the, there's a lot of traction. We see a lot of traction, a lot of interest and, and a lot of things to do. I mean, what we've done is a very good uh, baseline, um, but there's a lot of interest in going beyond. And we have ready plans for, for play out, uh, for, um, uh, enlarging the, the, the amount of supported codecs, supported streams, uh, workflows, deployments, etc. There are plenty of interesting questions in the in the chat and, and in uh, LinkedIn uh, about um, about what what can we do exactly and what, where are we going. So uh, we are very excited to, to to work work on this. I think we are we are in the forefront of, of development for this, and we can enable a lot of interesting workflows for our, our customers. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a great point is, you know, this is V1, right? And uh, there's a lot more to come. So, you know, we're obviously not stopping here. And uh, these partnerships are uh, built to last. And, you know, like I said, there'll be more news uh, coming soon. Uh, absolutely. So uh, I think I saw a question um, in terms of uh, maybe, Marcus, you can answer this one. The, the codec supported by High Vision, is it only SRT or can it do RTMP as well? On the uh, on the protocol side, people use us for uh, SRT for uh, uh, if we're talking about the gateway RTMP um, transport stream unicast multicast is a broad broad range of protocol supports, but it's 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 intended for for high quality low latency live streaming. Yep, yep, understood. Um, all right, well we're getting pretty close to the end. I uh, I want to just first and foremost thank panelists and everybody for participating in this today. I wanna also thank everyone who joined the webinar as well for taking your time to learn about Media Central Stream and the partnerships that we've enabled and what's now possible uh, from a workflow perspective for both on-prem and cloud-based workflows. Um, and so know that any questions that maybe we didn't answer live uh, have been answered in the chat. And then we will also uh, send this recording out to folks who signed up for the webinar. So when the recording is over, you'll get an email with the full recording of today's session. We'll also include any answers to any of those questions as part of that email. So uh, anything that maybe we didn't answer live, um, we will take all those questions that came in from both uh, the Zoom platform, but certainly from uh, any social media that we've been broadcasting to, and we'll publish all of those. So uh, thanks again, everybody. Great session. Uh, really appreciate everybody's time and uh, have a great rest of your day. <laughs>